Hello, creative, beautiful friends. So, you know I love painting flowers and I actually paint wedding custom bouquets um, as part of my business. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this beautiful wedding bouquet from a photo reference that my client has sent me. I got her permission to do this, to showcase this on YouTube, so don't worry. Um, this will be in real time. So if you're interested to see how this goes, let's dive right into the painting. Hey friends! So, as my intro has said, I am going to paint today a wedding bouquet. So this is an actual commission uh, of a wedding bouquet that I have received to paint. It is a gorgeous, beautiful, very symmetrical, gorgeous, lovely uh, bouquet of purple roses, white roses, uh, a bit of a yellowish cream roses, uh, lavender, uh, dark green leaves, and I feel like this is going to be a very beautiful bouquet. So part of my art business, and I do do a few things, is um, to paint commissions. So basically, you can uh, ask me to paint a bouquet, you send me your flowers, and it's usually a really beautiful wedding anniversary present that you know a husband can give to his wife or even like a best friend can give to her her friend um, something like that or even a gift to yourself you know if you really want to remember your beautiful wedding flowers on your special day and you know flowers fade and photo photographs can uh, you know retain its beauty but it's nothing like a lovely artistic watercolor floral version of your flowers to um, to hang out on your wall and to remember your very special day your very special friends and family and of course your partner that you said yes to so I'm gonna set this here and actually what I usually do in my process is that I will paint a draft or a sketch or like a warm-up version of this painting so I will be using um, this paper, Claire Fontaine aquarelle uh, paper. It's 100% cotton and it's really quite smooth. And um, I believe the size that this client has ordered is not as big as this one, slightly smaller. But I like to just be very loose and expressive with this first round of this watercolor uh, paintings. That's um, that's just my preference. So um, yeah, you get to see sort of like my process. And right now I'm just going to zoom out so that maybe you can actually have a, you know, the, the, the photograph of the actual, um, here we go. So I'm just zoomed out a little bit so that the picture or rather the painting is shown in the shot as well so that you can have a kind of uh, a glimpse of how I do this. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna set up my little tea, um, paper towel there. And I am going to paint. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually use my flat brush because um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I just love I'll just show you the painting again, the photograph. I just love how the roses are actually quite angular. You know, there's some, there's a sort of angularity and um, about the about these roses. And I've been told that this is actually taken a couple of days after the actual event. So the the flowers are a bit wilted already. And this is the actual uh, bouquet on the day. But uh, as you can see, you know, this photo is edited and it's not as sort of like vibrant and bright and i think the client wants me to capture the vibrancy of the actual bouquet so i'm just going to use this one because i i like this top view and she's also requested that it not have any show any stems so it's more of a top view loose style kind of effect all right all right so i'm gonna just um do a little bit of basically color swatching I don't usually do color swatching when I approach my paintings in general because I like I like things very loose. However, when it comes to a custom bouquet, um, it is quite important to get a bit of accuracy in terms of the actual. 
color. So this is a lilac -y color here and I do have a lilac, Holbein a lilac and I'm going to see how that looks. This lilac is not something I use a lot and I do find it a tad chalky but um, I think it might work for this one. Alright, so I'm going to start with this purple rose here and just mark it out. So this is not my the final piece, it's just sort of like a practice, okay? I'm uh, going to dip in a bit of that mineral violet into the lilac to just get a bit of the darker purple that's in the shadows to tap it in. Mm. I really do like how that one turned out. All right, I'm going to do another one here where I can see this one there. Hmm. And then I am going to go and do these white, very light, so it's basically just a super diluted version of that <clears throat> same hue. And I love this bouquet because it's got very uh, nice value contrast. It's got some white flowers, some darker flowers, and the leaves are just gorgeously dark. So the leaves are going to be my what, what pops, okay? Oops, got some dragon's blood in there, but it's okay. I'm just going to make this rose maybe a bit darker, not too dark. Wash it off. Okay, so I am going to get a white color going. Um, as well. So there are some white, white flowers. So the two that I painted here is like the very light purple, but there are some actual white ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe off this little corner of my palette, which contains all the grey, grey colour, and then I'm just going to go back in with some clear water and make a very light hue of a bit of that white. I feel like it needs a tad of green. Okay. Just dabbing my brush. And if you follow me here on my channel, frequently you know that um, this white, sorry, this flat brush is one of my most favorite brushes to use at the moment. Um, and I can't thank my friend Gillian Boone enough for teaching me how to use this in a watercolor workshop called um, no, no Formula Florals. I'll link her workshop in my description below. I'm an affiliate of her workshop because I just got so much value out of it. It's a very affordable workshop to learn how to just get to know your brushes a little, a little bit more because I really truly believe that um, one of the biggest key things to improving your art is to get to know your tools, you know. And prior to me taking her workshop, I think I was a little bit afraid of so really getting to know my brushes. Like I paint fast and loose and when you paint fast and loose, I find that sometimes we skip over uh, slowing down and building relationship with your tools, with my tools. So, yeah, anyway. Game changer. I love the flat brush. It's my go-to um, watercolor brush now. And I believe it's one of her favorite brushes too. So, um, I can't take credit for discovering the wonders of the flat brush in loose floral. So, so nice. Okay, I'm working on this light green flower here at the moment. So, as you can see, I'm just, just dancing around the page with my brush. 
Um, and I am pretty much following the composition that I see on the, in the photograph. And the nice thing about just painting bouquets is that um, it takes the comp almost takes the composition work out of it because it's kind of done for you. And of course, you you can make your own little adjustments and um, ways of expressing a bouquet in your own way. Of course, you don't. I, I would believe you don't have to follow to a T. As long as all the key flowers that the client says they want to showcase are in there um, in its hierarchy. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful ways that you can make it um, interpret it in your style. It's really looking good. I, I love how it's evolving and how it's growing. I really do. I really, really do. Okay, so I've kind of like put down most of like the bigger flowers and I'm going to go in with some leaves. Okay, so I'm going to mix up a little sap green. Um, and a touch of indigo to darken up the leaf color. All right, because this Holbein sap green that I have at the moment is quite intense. It's very vibrant and intense. And so just dull it down with a tad of indigo. All right, this is my favorite part now, which is just basically going in there with leaves, flicking my brush here and there. Um, to, yeah. So just varying the hue a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go in with a more of olive green now to just get a bit of variety. And I do see some lighter leaves, lighter, some of the funny ones. <sighs> All right. I do. I do actually <laughs> am liking how this turns out and almost thinking to myself, this could be the final product, you know. <laughs> um, I'm going to swap to a tinier, smaller round brush because I'm feeling like these smaller leaves need to have a bit more attention so I'm gonna this is for like the little little ferny ones you know those fern type filler flowers very fast very loose oh <sighs> breath breath in breath out Okay, I'm also noticing uh, like a very dusty blue, grayish kind of leaf around here. What is it? It's kind of like a... Don't know. Don't know the name of it, but... Um, just gonna put that here and there because I'm just gonna honor... the accuracy this is very nice i like that okay maybe in the final one i need to do be a little bit more sort of blue rather than green it's coming up more green now so i think yeah I'm just gonna go in with a bit more of that blue there's a bit sticking out here and i think it needs to have that shape a little bit more which is that bit of a bumpy Bumpy shape. Woo! 
I like it. I like it. Okay, so feeling like it's not round, it's kind of like in this odd shape, and the actual um, bouquet is more round. Um, I'm missing a very important partner. Maybe that will help to like eat, you know, expand a little bit. And it's the lavender. This client was telling me that lavender is an important part of this uh, painting. So let's get the color for this lavender right, okay? I'm gonna use a bit of Prussian and add it to the purpley mix there. And feeling it needs to become more pink again. So just adding a bit of permanent rose. Um, still just eyeballing it. More permanent rose, Prussian, yeah. Just a bit of Prussian, more Prussian. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's get a bit of that lavender. There's a few sticking out here. A bit of cerulean blue, I find. A bit of cerulean. Cerulean. Okay. Okay, there's so some right in the middle here. Sticking out there. Some there. Some there. Some there. Okay, how's it looking? I love it, I'm liking it. It's getting there. The thing about me is I tend to get a bit impatient and I want the painting to look right straight away. But I know it takes time. Logically, I know it takes time, it takes layers and I guess that's that's me and on, on my journey of journey of um, growth as an artist is to be to learn patience and things will not need to look perfect straight away. I always had that real urgency. I'm feeling like. There needs to be another purpley flower here because to just make it more into like a ball. Okay, so there are just these really beautiful small white filler flowers. Okay, and I feel like they need to be accented somehow. I'm gonna use like a bit of a grey, a nice diluted grey to, to feature that white flower. So I'm gonna sit back down now because uh, standing up is not working for me anymore. When I get into details, it's more of a sitting down type thing. So I'm gonna bring this a bit closer in and just... Hmm. I haven't left very much space for those filler flowers, but it's fine because I feel like um, this is loose, right? And when it comes to loose painting, there isn't that pressure of accuracy, uh, detail. There isn't the pressure of detail. 
Hmm. All right. I think as, as a first layer, this looks really good. As I say that, I, I'm, I'm keep going. <laughs> All right, done. I'm going to give it a break and then we'll come back and do a second layer. And we are back. This layer is beautiful and dry and I think it's created a really nice base for me to put some darker layers on to make the whole painting pop. Pop it will. Okay, I'm creating a nice dark mix of mineral violet, burnt umber here and dioxazine purple. And I'm going to go right into this first dark shadows of this rose. I love this brush to create layers because this is something about it that has a beautiful um, glidey way of making the layers just be just so just that much smoother okay all right happy with that one gonna go into this one as well so as you can tell i'm just sort of like creating like the outer c shapes and using the reference as a guide So this, these roses have a lot of layers into them and I want to just really honor the trueness of these gorgeous purple roses. Alright, there's one here. And I said that this is going to be my rough sketch but you know, sometimes when I do a commission and I do the rough sketch, it, and then I do the actual one, and then for some reason the rough one can sometimes turn out more beautiful than the actual intentional one. And I think why that happens is because I'm actually more relaxed when I'm doing the rough sketch. And because it's, you know, you're more relaxed, you don't tense up as, as much and somehow or another, the, sometimes the paintings come up even more beautiful and more loose. So who knows, this might turn out to be the actual one. And more often than not, I will send, if I do have a few versions, I will send all of the versions to the client and they get to pick which one they like. Sometimes I might just even send them all the versions because I mean, you know what? It's the point of me keeping them anyway. Nothing. And it's just a beautiful value add that you can do, that I can do for my, my client and my customer. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with those. I'm gonna work on layering the white flowers here, and I feel like. The shadows are kind of greenish. It's got a greenish glow. So, beautiful and loving how it's emerging. I'm gonna mix that green with a bit of gray for this flower here. And then same thing for this flower here. Guys, I'm recording a video. Can, may I help you? to dream reserve with you? Uh, yeah, you can if you want to. Yeah. What time will you get back and what time will you leave us? Oh, we are leaving here at 4.45. 
reaching there at 5 and I don't think we'll be back later than 7. So I think we'll be there about 2 hours max. Okay, Okay, you go to ask your, ask your dad. Okay, so... I mean, this is just a second layer. There might be a, a, a third one if I feel that it needs more, even more of a punchy depth. More, yeah, most of the times that you need like a final sort of like layer, but going around here now. Um, what was this? Was this a leaf or a flower? Yeah, I think this is a flower, so I'm just gonna... Put some shadows there for that one there. Mm. I feel like the lavender has faded a little bit, so I'm gonna bring it back. Bring it back, bring it back, shade it back, bring it back, shade it back to me, bring it back. Yes, yes, so oh, cute. Love the lavender pops. I do love these lavender pops. Let me know in the comments if um, if you liked your wedding bouquet. I mean, this is assuming you are married, you had a wedding, there was a bouquet, um, and you know, your experience of the whole floral arrangement thing in your wedding. Can I just tell you, I, I, I hate planning. I hate planning anything really. And my wedding plan planning was the same. I basically told the florist that I hired, surprise me. Literally, I didn't even want to think or oh, I didn't really care about flowers too much at that time. I just gave her the theme. It was a hippie, hippie flower power wedding. And I said, just surprise me. And what ended up being my bouquet was like sunflower. It was like a big sunflower with other mixed um, tropical, really brightly colored flowers. And I can't, I can't say that I actually liked it very much. And I, I was a bit of regret in, in feeling like I should have just, you know, spend a little bit more time and thought into the flowers but I, I just I just couldn't so yeah that was my floral wedding bouquet experience didn't really like the flowers I ended up with but I was okay with that I'm just seeing some pops of yellow or rather yellow green I think I, I just needed to give a bit of warmth of yellowy warmth into this rather cool colored bouquet. Okay, here and there, just pops of nickel, nickel yellow. Um, okay, now I feel like this flower here needs a bit of a detail at the top. This one, a bit of lemon yellow. All right, what do we have? Pulling it back and assessing what's going on.
Okay. Um, that's that's pretty much it for second layer. I do wanna just come back again to punch out a few more details um, and work on the flow a little bit more. Uh, and actually, we might be able to do it now because um, this layer is quite dry. I'm gonna grab like a bit of paint gray and green um, and just creating some nice dark centers for these main flowers that are facing the front. When you get more and more experience with painting in general, painting flowers, uh, there is there is a skill which is to um, create just the, the 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 perfect amount of focal point for the eyes to rest and land, and contrasting it with um, with places that eyes can rest. So where the eyes can focus and places where the eyes can rest. And sometimes you will look at a painting and you'll notice like there's just something a bit uncomfortable about. Sometimes when you look at certain paintings, there's a sense of discomfort. Um, and that is alleviated by a mastery of flow and directionality and yeah, all the good stuff about painting. Contrast, values. Just enough of details and enough of depth to let it all breathe and flow. Mm, okay, so. I do like this and I'm still feeling like we can definitely go a bit more darker. So just to bring out the contrast a little bit more. So I'm getting that real, starting to get more and more saturated with my paint. more and more saturated with the paint, meaning like less transparent, more opaque moments. Because this will be, this is how you get the contrast. All right, I'm feeling like I need to change up a little bit of the strokes because it's all feeling very dotty and pointy. So um, I'm going to make an effort to just dot some of these lavender um, to just vary the vary the strokes so it doesn't get too monotonous at least that's what I'm thinking <sighs> all right a few more touches here and there. Touch here and layer there. It's 
also in these final details that can make or break a painting. And it's quite difficult to teach this because a lot of it is intuitive feeling and observation of what you like, observation of your subject. And tons of trial and error. Tons. Whew. Okay. All right. I'm feeling And there you have it. This is the wedding bouquet floral painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know if you painted along. If you do, let me know. Tag me on Instagram. This is my Instagram uh, handle. If you're interested to get me to paint your wedding bouquet, I have all the information in the link below. Um, prices, sizes, lead times, and all that. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.